So this is a painting I did probably three or four weeks ago and um, it has been chosen for an ex exhibition in Durham, North Carolina at North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics and um, so I have not sealed it yet and so I'm going to show you a resin pour today. I've only done it two other times on um, Lazy Susan's, wooden Lazy Susan. So this is the first time on a canvas. Um, just hoping it goes well. The product I'm going to use is by Fama Wood. It's called Glaze Coat high gloss and it's a part A and a part B and you put equal parts. So I've got two plastic containers. I had to go find me a stir stick. Be dry, sanded, and free of dust. That's part A. Part B. I'm going to add just a little bit more so there are equal amounts. to the other. And it becomes cloudy and it will warm up as you mix it too, so don't be alarmed when that happens and you're supposed to mix it for up to about six minutes. So I started my timer here. And I think this is probably way more than I'll need, but I want it to cover the surface and go on to the sides as well. Um, I do want to, I'm supposed to be stirring this, I wanted to make sure there was some support in the middle. Um, it's a little bit higher, so I'm going to have to look around and find something just a little lower. This is also going to re uh, it's going to have bubbles in it from stirring so much and you have to keep a heat gun or a torch and I've got a heat gun around so that after you put the layer of resin on before it sets up you can put the heat gun on it to pop those bubbles. As you stir make sure you go around all your sides too as well. And this is probably the last time I'm going to use this product. Uh, there's a couple other resins I've seen uh, that other people use. One is Art Resin, and there may be some others that people have that are their favorites, but this one is I've used before, and it's extremely like sticky and messy and drippy, and maybe they're all that way, but I didn't find it much fun to work with. Um, I am leaving this right here after I pour it. The, when I used it bef this product before I had to move everything to a different room and um, I just made a big mess. So this is going to stay right here after I pour it to dry.
and then I'll put a cover over it above it to keep any dust from falling on it. But I heard, you know, I did not clean up my table with the paper and paint on the paper and all that because I knew that once I pour this resin and it sets up on this paper, I'm going to have to throw the paper away anyway because it'll be rock solid like glass. I'm just mixing and mixing. I've got two minutes left and then I'll pour it into the other cup and continue to stir it. And you have to put it in a plastic container too. You can't put it in like foam or something like that because that the heat and the the uh, resin might would you know react with the foam and do something weird. You can't put it in a big paper cup that's plastic coated or wax coated because there would probably be some kind of a chemical reaction. So you have to put it in something plastic. So I'm wiping these sides, and it's quite hard to stir something for six minutes straight. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> It feels like forever. It's nice and firm and it's not raised my canvas up. So I'm in my last minute of the stirring. That was my timer. I'm going to pour it into the other cup. Set the timer again. Continue to stir. I can feel the warmth in the cup. Um, it's starting to warm up a little bit. And I don't know what that is. It's just, I guess it's the chemical reaction, but you know, uh, it's not uncom uncommon for it to heat up a little bit. The beauty of resin is that it, um, it's almost like a glass coating on top of your painting and it really just makes anything in your painting kind of pop. Like this here and here, these areas are copper and there is a little dimension that sticks out just a little bit in the, the white of the waves and all and, and that, will, that will come through and look more three dimensional with the resin on top of it. gloves on real quick. Some people use 
scrapers and some people use their hands to move the paint around um, because you have a, a certain amount of time to play with it and uh, it self levels. So when I see people using the hands, it's like, hmm, I wonder how smooth it gets, but it does level out because it is self leveling. Time's up. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this goes well. I do have my scraper here just in case I need it to uh, move things around. I'm going to try not to use the scraper. Um, but it's nice and firm because I've got something under it and um, so here goes. I guess I'm going to use a scraper. Um, I'm going to do the heat gun first. Because it has lots of little tiny bubbles. And so now I'm just going to work it to the edges. I do have it. Uh, I have push pins under the canvas also to keep it raised off the table. And um, I taped the bottom on the underside so that um, the drips will not be sticking to the bottom side of the canvas. making sure my edges are totally covered. I don't I can't describe what it feels like. It's almost like super thick sticky um, corn syrup maybe. And I see places where it's hitting a little bit because of the silicone 
that I probably didn't get cleaned off enough. So I'm adding a little, I took a drop of silicone and added it into my hand. I don't know if it'll work or not. I'm just going to continue to do this until I feel like the canvas is covered fairly well. Of course, there won't be any silicone around the edges of the canvas or anything like that because the turquoise color around all the edges is just, you know, what I painted. I painted the canvas that color before I did the pour. So. Doing one more drop of silicone. I had read when I did the uh, Lazy Susans, one of them did pretty perfect, and the other one had it was pitted, and um, so I knew that I was going to have to do a second coat. And I asked, you know, what do I do because I know that's where the silicone was. And somebody said, add a drop or two of silicone to your resin, and. Um, I was going to do that, and I was so upset and, you know, just nervous about it the second time I put the resin on that I forgot to put the silicone in the resin. So somebody else on Facebook said you can take silicone and rub it into the areas that um, are pitted, and that worked. It was not perfect, but it certainly helped it uh, tremendously, the way it looked. So I'm just trying to get that, make sure all the edges are nice and smooth. And Just going around and trying to make sure I haven't missed any spot on the canvas at all. If you have an area that's not uh, covered with resin, it will feel, it'll not feel slick and it, you can feel the canvas material and then you'll know that you need to add some more resin to that area. Now I think I've got a pretty good coverage. I'm gonna heat it again. There it is, and um, I think it looks pretty good.
I saw a few areas where I could kind of see maybe where I had added some silicone with my fingers. So I was just trying to trying to mix it in to make sure that it doesn't show up because you want it to be totally clear and perfect and no uh, reflections of anything or whatever so There we are, and what I'll do is, um, after it dries, I'll take a picture and or two and put it at the end of the video so you can see exactly um, how it turned out. I mean, right now, it looks deeper. It really, um, it just makes everything so much more vibrant, and it makes it kind of feel almost a little bit more 3D. And I'm not sure if I can show you that in pictures or not, but um, I certainly will try. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. There will be lots more that I want to share with you. Thank you.